All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into Kings and Apples Season 1, Episode 4, Dear Wearing People. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome to Tammy Talks. I do breakdowns of TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, theories, all that type of stuff in there. So if you enjoy that type of content, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, thumbs up the video. If you enjoy it tonight, hop into the comments. Let's talk about this. This episode drained me, y'all. <laughs> I can't explain why, but I was just not into it. Um, I feel like it didn't get good, like, really until the end, mainly because I'm sick of Dana. But let's talk anyways. So it starts off with um, a flashback to, 2020, to 2010, where um, two guys are looking at Dana's resume. They're saying that he's impressive. He checks off the minority affirmative action box. So on top of that, he like he just has the credentials, the knowledge, the experience, all the other type of stuff. He comes in for the position. They see he's a little person. They noticeably make a face. I feel like in 2010, we should have been a little bit more progressive as a people um, to kind of understand little people and stuff like that, but maybe not. So nonetheless, it led to him not getting the job, thus him not working at um, King's Vineyard, King Winery, whatever it's called. So he meets with Aunt Melanie. All right. So they're out at lunch and she is telling him how, like she's trying to kind of be there for him and console him, et cetera, et cetera. He is still mad that August got to be CEO. He feels that the family doesn't respect him. The family doesn't appreciate him. And that's why August got it. And my whole thing is like, look, Dana, just because you didn't get made CEO does not mean that your family does not respect you. I feel like that whole little, I feel like that whole little storyline, that story arc is tired, really, at this point. Like, he's acting like he's out working the fields with Christian. You're the C, what, CFO. You're CFO. Instead of, like, partnering with, um, August and trying to, like, get on her good side, to kind of like just really run more ideas by her. I just feel like he's going about it the complete, complete wrong way. So Melanie tells him that she has an idea on how he can get his family's respect back and kind of get on their good side, you know, so they can see him in a different light. So the family is eating while discussing a name for the new dessert wine. So... Christian wants to name it like a stripper name. He said like Black China. Um, and then Aunt Yvette wants to name it like Late Night. And then Vanessa is like, you're not in the family. And it's like, I'm sick of Vanessa and Dana. They are made for each other. <laughs> sick, sick, sick of them. Um, but while they're all talking about, you know, the game plan that they want to use, how they want to amp up promotion and all this other type of stuff. You know, again, we're trying to get the company back in the black. Dana comes in and tells them that Aunt Melanie got him into this magazine that's like assets under 40 or 40 under 40 assets, something like that. So he was telling them that, you know, don't need y'all. These are people that really acknowledge and understand my talents and blah, 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 whatever, whatever. Um, and it's weird because what have they done to show Dana that they don't like respect him is he really basing that basing that off of the fact that he didn't get to be um ceo of the company i just think that's weird so his mother tells him you know be careful don't trust aunt melanie because we know how she gets down so dana's wife comes in dana's in his office um look like he's looking over some numbers doing some reports and she comes in and tells him like brings him a little breakfast or whatever and then kind of tells him that you know she knows that he is sorry. I'm sorry that he wants, she wants him to know that she is sorry for not voting for him um, and that she did it for the best interest of the company. He on the flip turns it and it's like, well, you know, you should have been doing it for me. You should have had my back. You know, I was trying to stage a coup and you cut the legs up, you know, you cut my legs off. And then he was basically like, you know, but whenever the family didn't have your back, whenever they didn't like your promotional, promotional stuff, or whenever they didn't like any of your ideas, or, you know, you tried to pitch the paint and sip to my mom, I always had your back. And then he was just basically telling her, but now I see how it is. 
And my thing is like, Dana, you are just not that mad that your wine didn't get picked. You like, if everybody voted and everybody, you know, but whatever, Rose is telling him, look, I did this for the greater good of the company for our family. And he was on some, the family, this is my family. The family should have been the two of us. So that's what he's on. He's rude to her. She goes and, you know, she's like, I didn't know we were keeping score. And he was like, well, now you do. Now you do. And I said, ooh, Dana. Ooh, he has such a Napoleon complex. So, you know, her feelings are hurt as they should be. And she walks out. So then August comes in and it's like, you know, she wants to talk to him because he's still like spiraling because he found out that his parents or his mom wanted to abort him. So she was like, you know, this is for, you know, I'm sorry that your wife voted against you. This is for the greater good of the company. I want us to work together on this. And aside from that, I am your sister. You know what I mean? Like you can talk to me about anything. Dana is like, oh, so we're, we're family now? Because where, where was the family? Where was the sister, the sister friend, friend, sister, when, you know, you cut Bridget out or when Bridget crossed you? And she was just like, you know what? All right, Dana. Okay. I would feel like his little yamp ass, we just went and, we just went and talk. If it's one thing I can't stand to somebody that when they are upset about something, one, holds a grudge, and two, just acts out the way that he's act, a, acting. Like, you're being mad over nothing. You're being, like, you're so smart, Dana. I would think that you would know to get on her good side first, and then maybe you can, like, work your way in and take over the company that way. But the little tantrums you're having is kind of showing why your father didn't leave you in charge. So, um, next we see uh, Christian who is such an um, unimportant part of the show in the family. But we see Christian, and he's out running through the vineyard with um, some girl he's talking to. And, you know, he's grabbing all over her. They're kissing. He's plucking off grapes so she can taste it. And Otis, the um, the groundskeeper, all, as always, has an attitude. And it's kind of on some, don't be trampling through here. We're trying to do this. Like, we're out here actually trying to work unlike you. And the girl was like, I don't like the way that he talked to you. Meanwhile, Christian is like, it's cool. He knows I'm in charge. And I'm like, does he? <laughs> Christian, do you know you're in charge? <coughs> so, silly. So, Bridget is at the new vineyard. You know, she's working with Sean and Sean. And she's over at the vineyard. And she is um, showing them that, you know, some of their grapes are drying out or some of their vines are drying out. And she's just kind of looking around when one of the Sean's like gets a, phone, a text message and kind of runs off. And then we see them like putting up all these cameras and motion detectors. And she was like, what's going on? And they were like, oh, it's just for a schedule. And one Sean was like, look, we don't have time for the foolishness. We're being extorted $150,000 um, every month. So Bridget puts two and two together. So who's ever extorting them must be the same people that are extorting the kings. So back at the house, Dana's doing this photo shoot and the family is all around watching. And his mother is like, why don't you try the other blazer? It's like a, a slightly different shade of blue. It was not a huge difference at all. And he was like, with these pants, girl, please. Because <laughs> Dana be dressed, right? So he's like being super, super rude to everybody, talking about some, it's all about me, it's all about me today, this is my day, like just really, really doing the most, right? And the photographer would say, hey, why don't we do like a power shot? Have like your wife in there or with your mother, like, you know, the readers really love that type of stuff. And he would say, my mom... How about my aunt, who is a real boss bitch and has owned her own company? My mom is just a housewife. I said, wow, you are not that mad, Dana. Ooh, she's, you acting like they tried to abort you and the shit didn't work. Like, Dana is doing the absolute most. So, you know, his, I mean, everybody's feelings are hurt because everybody's kind of like, wow, you're doing a little too much now. Bridget comes over. Vanessa's mad that Bridget's at the house. She's mad that Melanie is at the house. My whole thing is Bridget is an innocent bystander in this. She's a casualty of war that Vanessa kind of needs to get over. Kind of needs to get over. So 
Vanessa ca- tries to like run up on her and is on some, you're not supposed to be here and this is disrespectful and you're not respecting boundaries. And Vanessa, um, Bridget was like, okay, girl, well, I just wanted to let you know the people that are extorting Sean and Sean are extorting y'all. So now August is mad because it's like, why are you throwing me under the bus? I kind of feel like, why are you treating your mother with such kid gloves? She's clearly okay with the way that she's running around here talking and to, talking to y'all. But I feel like while August probably is the best person to lead the company, she has to start trusting herself more. August got to be a little more cutthroat. You know, she likes to give everybody the benefit of the doubt and then want to feign hurt when things don't work out the way, when everybody else is being cutthroat. So Bridget is... um kind of um like talking to August like well girl I didn't I didn't know she's keeping this from you what else is she keeping from you because Bridget is so upset that August fired her that now she wants to you know blow up her spot too and it's like y'all know all just very vindictive people y'all are all holding grudges every a lot of this should have been avoided if we want to keep it a buck Melanie shouldn't bring her ass to the house no more because you were sleeping with my husband and then everything else should have been working the way that it should have been working just fine but it's tv right so Vanessa now Vanessa's pissed that nobody told her so now she's on the tirade with her terrible acting so now she's on the tirade um like walking through the house kind of mad that no one told her anything so after she get herself together and she comes down to back to the living room with a like dumb handful of grapes um they all sit down and they explain to her what's been going on so august and dana say that they took the um they made one of the first payments after their father won that award. So now Christian's mad. Why didn't y'all take me? Why did I have to sit and babysit mine? Because you look like you F stuff up. So now they're like, well, I couldn't went to protect y'all. It's okay. Arcus had a gun. Who she get a gun from? Melanie gave a gun. So now Vanessa's mad that she gave her grown daughter a gun. And it's like, Who's wow? So while this is going on, everybody's going back and forth, fussing and fooling like they typically do on here. The PI, Quincy, comes in and said that Otis, the groundskeeper, works for both vineyards, both the Kings and Sean and Sean's. And so he did like an aerial view of his house and he has an $80,000 boat. I don't know how much grand groundskeepers make, but it ain't enough to buy an $80,000 boat. So he also found out that he had an argument with their father about keeping the vineyard clean before he passed away. And Bridget says she remembers that because she was there for that. Um, Dana wants to call the police right away, get them to start investigating. August is on some, nope, I'm not going to get a black man arrested right away without us having like, like very, very solid proof. And I'm like, August girl, you dragging your feet dragging your feet on this one so we switch over so now Dana's doing um like the written portion or the audio portion of his interview the entire family is around and it's going great so far they're having a little friendly banter Christian mentions that the boys are close they um Christian mentions that the boys are close they even play you know pick up basketball once a week he's like and I let him win and instead of Dana just like going with it he like makes a smart remark back which causes everybody to start just going back and forth at each other so August sees what's going down and tells the interviewer could you give us a moment Dana's like no it's about me this is my interview this is my interview and I'm like Dana lord so it starts to get a little more heated. So the interviewer finally is like, I'm going st- to step to the side. So while she steps out, they start really going back at it. You can't tell me what to do. You wanted to abort me and you're ruining the family and this and that. You're doing such a good job with the financials. Why are we in the condition? Like really going in. So the interviewer comes back in and it's like, okay, y'all, I got all the footage I need. And she takes the camera with her. They see that the camera was still on so they're like whoa 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 we need you to give us that tape and she was like uh no like this is property of what is it called like asset managers or something like that so 
now they all are fussing with each other once again because now we don't really messed up because some of our big family secrets, including the fact that we're being extorted, is getting ready to be released in a, I'm assuming like a statewide at least magazine. So Melanie is, um, Vanessa is doing a sip and, a sip and paint. And Melanie comes in to interrupt her, which I thought was so rude. She's clearly working. The conversation can wait. But she comes in to ask to come in to talk to her, tells her that she's always been jealous of her. Because growing up, she was the fat little sister. And she was always known as so-and-so's little sister. And like, I, I have lived that life, right? I have an older brother. He is older. He's like way more social than me, way more popular. Um, knows more people, one, because he's older. So I am typically known as Nick's little sister. There are people, and I am grown AF now, but there are people that have still seen me. Oh, that's Nick's little sister. Oh, you're Nick's little sister, right? It's just not, maybe it's different when it's um, two sisters, but to me, it's, it's not the end of the world. It's just not the end of the world. Because I tell people very quickly, yeah, I am, but my name is Tammy. Like, it's not, I feel like it's just not the end of the world. Like, I feel like I, I just, the way that Melanie was going about this, but then it came into, I love you and I love your kids and me and Richard, isn't it Richard? Robert, the father, we would talk once a week, but it was mainly about Bridget, but he was scared for y'all. Like he was legit scared. So he even had like an escape plan and Vanessa's like, the fact that you got the audacity girl to come here and talk to me about this and it's like Vanessa pay attention to what she's saying look past the fact that she was cheating with your husband look past that for a brief minute girl very brief minute and just listen to what she is saying she's basically saying that this extortionist was no joke this was some real deal stuff so she tells her, he look in some of his cigar boxes in his office, you'll find everything. So Vanessa goes running through the office like a mad woman, ripping stuff open, and then she finally finds a bunch of money and a bunch of passports, all with their pictures, but with different names on there. So now her and Argus are like, what the F is going on? So while this is going on, Dana gets a text from Quincy that the groundskeeper has an extra $50,000 in his savings account. So he runs in to go and he ends up finding um, August and he's like, look, <laughs> the groundskeeper now has $50,000 extra in his savings account. We have to talk about this. We have to like get to the bottom of this. So while the family is kind of talking, once again, August wanting to wait, um, the interviewer comes in and she's mad that the board or whoever's over the magazine wants to kill the story. So she was like, you one percenters or, you know, can't keep your shit together in an interview. And come to find out that Vanessa called, she knows somebody on the board, she killed the story so that Dana doesn't get put into such a negative light in his his little, you know, cover story debut. So Dana is like shocked that his mother, you would do that for me. And it's like, Dana, like what, what, what has your mother shown you to make you feel like she don't like you or that she doesn't respect you or anything like that? It's weird. It is like, I feel like it's such a, it was such a weird story arc for them to even have because it really had no mirror behind it. Not that we can see at least. So not that I can see at least I'll say. So she tells she tells him that yes, when they saw his little body, they thought about abortion because they didn't want him to have to live a harder life than he needed to by being a little person. She also says that, but that was the only reason. It wasn't because <clears throat> we don't want to have to deal with you being special needs. We didn't want you to have to deal with being special needs, if that makes sense. So then she's like, yeah, you didn't get that particular job because your father wanted you to work with us. We didn't know how to tell you. Um, so that's really where that came from. So now he's all happy, happy-go-lucky, excited, and he is okay with everything that's going on. He gives her a big hug. Yay, now everybody is a big, happy family again. My whole thing is if you would have took the time, Dana, to go and talk to your mom beforehand, 
all of this could have been avoided. So Dana um, gets a call while he's sitting in his office that Sean and Sean's vineyard was just poisoned. So he runs um, to go. He runs to go until August. And she was like, but what does that mean? Let's wait. And he was like, F the bull, August. I'm calling the police now before they come over here and mess up ours. So he gets a call from Bridget. So he goes and they call the police. And y'all, when the police come, Otis tries to run. Otis runs, gets in his van, and then crashes his van. So while Otis doesn't necessarily confess, he is in... He is in, like, he's in the hospital and he's unconscious. So they're like, we have to take the fact that he ran as guilt because why would you run? If somebody, if the police came up in here today and said, Tammy, you are under arrest, I'm not going to run because I haven't done anything. You see what I'm saying? So it kind of doesn't make sense. So the family's sitting around talking about that, trying to figure out what the next step is, what we are going to do. And... August is walking Bridget to the door and Bridget is like, you don't have to walk me to the door. I'm about sick of Bridget too, because Bridget is still, and I understand Bridget being upset about being fired. I totally get that. But Bridget being like, you used to be more about friendship and not really about the business. But see, there's a difference now, Bridget, because she's not just working for the business. She's the CEO. You know that she is doing this out of concern for her mother. So if you expect her to put your feelings behind her mother's, you are crazy. Absolutely, totally crazy. Something about Bridget is like really, I don't know what it is. So um, Argus kind of tells her like, I, like, yeah, I had to make that particular move for the business, but that shouldn't affect our friendship. We have always been more than cousins. We've been friends and now we're sisters. Like we can start our relationship over. Let's start this friendship over. And she, um, Bridget is like, I'll think about it. I'm like, girl, go on home and get yourself together. Cause you being annoying right now. You're being annoying right now. So finally we see Christian out working the fields and He's like confused. One of the other workers tells him, we all have a cheat sheet. We walk around with the cheat sheet. Go and get you one. So he goes in the, um, in the office to get one. And he's looking around and he sees Bridget's bag. And when he opens it up, I don't know if that was cocaine or if that was like weed killer or what. But it looked like Bridget is up to something she should not be. So now wondering, is Bridget the one extorting the family? Tell us who's doing it so we can get on to like actually making some wine. <laughs> but I think that's the that's the basis of the story. But who who is extorted? Because why would Otis run? I don't know. I don't know, y'all. Let me know how you guys felt about tonight's episode. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, thumbs up the video. Catch you guys in the next one.